Now this particular news story is very concerning for the family that lives out in the Los Angeles area. Now, when I seen this and I've been noticing this for a while and black people, we're going to have to start looking more into these white supremacist tattoos because you see a lot of cops now with tattoos on them. And when I was a kid, cops wasn't like that having a bunch of tattoos all over the place. And now they walking around here full of tattoos. And I'm like, I knew someone right about that. Them having a bunch of tattoos like that. At one point in time, the police department had some sort of integrity to not allow their cops to look that way, but things have changed. So in this particular story, a superior judge has ordered the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department officials to reveal whether it knows the names or a list of deputies with a matching skull tattoo believed to be linked to a secret society at his Compton station. Now, this secret society is a white supremacist group, okay? It's not the first time you had open white supremacists that have infiltrated law enforcement. Remember, back in 2006, there was an FBI report came out that white supremacist groups were infiltrating law enforcement all over the country, and they called them ghost skins, okay? Now, there is a family that sued and then the family of Donta Taylor, a black man who was shot by deputies in 2016 and an attorney for the family argued the shooting was carried out by members of a white supremacist deputy clique that targeted the country's African American residents. See, we always under siege. See, no other group is under siege like us. So when people try to compare you black folks to why you ain't like the Asians, why you ain't like this group, why you ain't like that group. Show me the white supremacist groups that's targeting Asians. Show me, show me the white supremacist groups that's targeting Arabs and targeting. The, no, they don't target them. They target you. They target us. This is who they target. Any gains you try to get, they uh, try to shut that down. You get too high in, in, in society. They try to figure out ways to do co pro. No other group deals with that but black folks. That's why I don't want to hear no talk about what other people do because you don't have the, the target on your head like black men, especially black men, and definitely black women. You don't have that. Now, they said the members of this group get this tattoo on them, okay? And we want to make sure to put that tattoo up so you can know that tattoo exactly what it looks like. Now, they say that, that there was a deposition that was done. And in this deposition, a cop by the name of Samuel Aldama admitted in a deposition that there are at least 20 other officers in the Compton station branded with the same ink. He's admitting there's 20 other white supremacists, open white supremacists running around in the Compton station of the LA uh, County Sheriff's Department who are white supremacists. He's admitting that part. If he's meaning 20, I would assume at least 40. I would assume that. It's dangerous for black people. And on top of that, you have the government in California allowing everybody just to come in there and then the people they're allowing to come in there, they're coming in with this anti-black hate. So black folks got to deal with white supremacist cops who's in a, a white supremacist gang that's on the LA uh, County Sheriff's Department. Then they got to deal with MS-13. Then they got to deal with um, high taxes. They have to deal with um, the government just shutting them out, not looking out for them. And this is why when I was in California, and I was doing my video on Taste of Soul to the, and I was talking to the one sister. I understand that she got a house there, she, whatever. But all the things that stacked up against black people in the state of California, why are you still there? I don't know. We have a great migration actually coming back to the South. If I was in California and I knew all these things was happening on top of the environment, on top of how I saw all these black people on the side of the road, sleeping on the streets, and it was, I didn't see that many black folks like that before. It was last time I went uh, to Cali you know, LA. I mean, it's not good for black people in California at all. It, it's not. Now, they talked about, originally the white supremacist gang 
called the Vikings uh, 30 years ago. Um, and it was a neo-Nazi type game. And so this judge wants to know who has this tattoo now. This is what this judge wants to know. He's, he's ordered uh, this information to be turned over. Brothers and sisters, it, it's just, it, it, it's good the white supremacists are being exposed. Trust me, don't, I know some of you, you know, you don't want to pay attention to white supremacy. You, you, a lot of you try to block it out by just immersing yourself in entertainment, immersing yourself in the things that don't really produce you anything. Because I know it's hard as black people. It is hard. I mean, you really think about the hate that we get as black people in this country. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbearable. I mean, cause life in itself is hard. You know, it don't matter about color on that. Life in itself is hard. But then when you're hated every step of the way, when they have, they form special gangs just to come at you because of the color of your skin. And then every level you dealing with white supremacy, you go to work, you deal with white supremacy. You know, you're watching, you know, the, the Jim Crow system, the Jim Crow system is back. I mean, if y'all haven't paid attention to that. Jim Crow is back. You could point to so many things that's going on today, how Jim Crow is back and in full swing in America and they blatant with it. Now you just don't want to label it Jim Crow, but well, I just want to just let the family know about this, um, to make sure. And I'm going to post that picture. We showed earlier about the tattoo, uh, on our Twitter page. I want you guys to, uh, look at that, share that, have that tattoo in your mind. If you ever see that, uh, call 911 and say, Hey, you know, you need to get some supervisor out here. Even though I know the supervisor could be, he could be in the game too. We don't know, but you know, we definitely got to keep interactions with cops, um, recorded. We have to say less as possible to them. You don't have to give them a bunch of information other than what the state requires like ID and, uh, registration or whatever. Cause understand when you pulled over, you're a prisoner of war at that point, because you don't know who you're dealing with. You don't know who you're dealing with one of the white supremacist, um, sheriff's deputies. You don't know. And, and that's, and I will say, always take that thought mindset, especially when you got no credible things that you have open white supremacists riding around in the LA area and the judge is ordering to find out if they have these particular tattoos, be on high alert people, be on high alert.